Hey everyone, it's Josh here. In today's software showdown, we're gonna be taking a look at Microsoft Copilot versus ChatGPT. Both of these AI chatbots are absolute behemoths on the market right now, and they both have their respective differences. But what are they? So today, we're gonna to be taking a look at what exactly they can do. Creative writing generation, technical analysis, coding, all that stuff. Seeing which one is better and seeing which one would be best for you. With that being said, let's jump right into this, figuring out everything and putting them to the test on which is better. Microsoft Copilot or ChatGPT. Now, before we get started here, I do wanna give a quick shout out to our AI newsletter, Neural Frontier. We publish this weekly and it has tons of AI news, topics, tools, everything you need to stay updated in this day and age of AI and to keep your creative toolbox up to date. So with that being said, if you're interested in that sort of thing, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Now let's get into it, showing you a total showdown between Microsoft Copilot and ChatGPT. All right, the first prompt in our showdown is gonna be generate a technical explanation of how machine learning algorithms are used in recommendation systems. What I'm trying to look for here is how does each chatbot respond to being asked a very complex question? And the response it gives, does it satisfy the criteria of being able to be read by somebody who doesn't understand that technical stuff? If they give back a bunch of technical mumbo jumbo that most people don't understand, that wouldn't be a very intuitive response from a chatbot that's supposed to be more conversational. So let's see how each of these respond. Now, note for this section, we're not gonna be focusing on the speed, solely on the response. How do we like it? How does it stack up against the other one? We'll see. Okay, so I'll hit submit for both of these here and we'll see what we get. All right, so both of these gave pretty lengthy responses, so let's take a look at them one by one. Starting off with Copilot, collaborative filtering. We can see here it's given a pretty detailed and lengthy response here to what it's actually got for collaborative filtering. And it also uses examples, which it links to on the web. It talks about the data collection, similarity calculation, and all that stuff. It then breaks it down based on user-based versus item-based, and then goes to content-based, how it works, and talks about combining both approaches. It gives it an example, and then does a conclusion. It's pretty good. It's given a full overview of exactly what it is that I asked for, explaining the concepts in a way that would make sense to the majority of people, collecting user item interactions, ratings, clicks, or purchases. That would make sense to the average person. For the most part, I think it's done a good job of actually putting the information in a way that would be understood by the majority of people, even if they don't have a technical background. And it gives examples that you could go to to read further on the actual topic as references. Okay, so taking a look at ChatGPT's response, we can see that it's pretty similar here. We've got our header with our main topic, We've got things broken down, for example, step-by-step, step, number by number. Number one, collaborative filtering. Talks about how it works. User-based collaborative filtering, and item-based. Algorithms used, strengths and weaknesses, and then content-based filtering. Really, it seems like the only difference here is that ChatGPT 4.0 actually gives algorithms that are used in these. It also mentions hybrid recommendation systems and a conclusion. It seems like here, ChatGPT is just giving a more detailed version of the answer that Copilot is. Now, that's very interesting. We can see here that algorithms used, which was something that Copilot did not include, is things like TF-IDF, this algorithm's used in text-based filtering, cosine similarity, things that would be a little bit more technical here. But overall, this model has given us a much more detailed response. Now, something to note here. There might be a reason why both these systems are so similar in the fact that Microsoft has a huge stake in OpenAI. They've been putting tons of funding into it, and the technology that actually powers Copilot is very, very similar to what powers ChatGPT. All right, overall, I think both the responses created by both of these applications were pretty good. ChatGPT was a little bit more in depth, but again, it might just be on the way that I phrased it. ChatGPT went into much more of the technical aspect, and since we're using a model that's better for complex tasks, that's pretty good but it doesn't give any references to where it gets that information from. Whereas Microsoft Copilot gives an easy to digest answer. What do you think is the best one here? Moving on to number two, asking it something very complex. Generate a Python script that retrieves real-time stock prices from a public API and explain how each part of the code works. We're gonna see, first of all, if it can actually create this and if it can show its work. So let's see how both of them do. Now, something to note here is that GPT-4 is not going as fast as Microsoft Copilot is in the generation. Okay, just at first glance, we can see here that both of these look pretty similar. I'd imagine that both of these actually have the ability to go and retrieve stock prices from a real-time source. And they're commented, they're clean, they're written properly. If we look down here, the main thing that I'm looking for is the code explanation. Does it know what the code it wrote actually does? And again, this is where it gets interesting. Depending on what response you would prefer to have, this could go really either way. On the right here for ChatGPT, we can see that it breaks it down by 
imports, requests, JSON, request.json, time. It just talks about each individual line. Whereas the explanation on the Copilot side actually talks about the line items and gives it to you in a code block that you can copy so that you know what section of the code it's actually on. ChatGPT goes much more in depth on breaking down every single individual aspect, but Copilot wrote a much more simplified approach, but it still works. Copilot gives an example usage here and ChatGPT gives a basic how to run, which Copilot did at the beginning. Overall, they've both done a good job of actually going ahead and following the instructions that I put, actually creating the code and giving a detailed explanation that breaks it down step by step. For both of these responses, if I was a non-techie who didn't understand this, I would actually be able to make some sense of the code because it's broken down in a way that just makes sense. Both coding explanations are broken down step by step and give an overview of exactly how either of them work. Now, when it comes to actually testing them in practicality, Obviously, that's going to be up to you in your own code with your own specific requirements. But for the most part, I would say that both of these, I'm confident, are pretty well written Python scripts. All right, showdown number three, getting onto some creative writing and copy. We're going to be asking it to write a 300 word marketing copy for a new AI powered writing assistant designed for content creators. Emphasize that the tool can improve productivity, creativity, and content quality. So we're gonna go ahead and hit submit here for both of these and see exactly what we get. Both of these finish pretty quickly here. So let's go over them one by one. Okay, Copilot, obviously unleash your creativity with our AI powered writing assistant. That's that's as good of a header as you're gonna to wanna to get. Are you a content creator? Oh, it's more of a sales pitch, very interesting. Meet your new best friend. Boost your productivity, ignite your creativity, enhance content quality. So you'll notice that the titles here actually pretty much reiterate what I wanted about how the tool can improve productivity, creativity, and content quality, reiterating that with paragraphs in each section. Why choose our AI writing assistant? Time saving, inspiration, quality assurance. Transform your content creation process with our AI powered writing assistant. Well, that's pretty good. I think it's covered all the bases there. It's emphasized how the tool can improve productivity, creativity, content quality, and it gives an overview about the AI powered writing assistant and why it works best for content creators. Now comparing that to ChatGPT, definitely a different response. First of all, we have a name here, Inspire Writer, the AI powered writing assistant designed to supercharge your creativity, whether you're a blogger, YouTuber, or social media influencer. So it's addressing that. Kind of talks about it in a sense that it's a sales pitch but almost like a spoken sales pitch. It's like you would have someone in front of you in an infomercial saying, not only does Inspire Writer help generate new content, but I don't know how well this necessarily translates to something like copy for a marketing document, for example. If I were to compare the two side by side here, it seems like ChatGPT takes a lot more of a verbal tone. It's almost like an infomercial, introducing Inspire Writer and then the rest of the copy there. Whereas Copilot definitely takes the angle of going on a website. This would be something that you would see on social media for marketing, for example, or on a blog post or anywhere that you would be trying to sell this in a digital format that would be read but not spoken. And ChatGPT doesn't really have any headers in here. So honestly, for this part, although I I'm trying not to be biased. I got to go with unleash your creativity with our AI powered writing assistant because specifically what I asked for was marketing copy. I didn't specify what medium that marketing copy would be in, but for the ChatGPT response, I don't think this would hold up on a website. It just kind of feels really salesy and uh, yeah, I got to give this one to Copilot, but let me know down in the comments below if you think I made the right choice or if you disagree. All right, so for our final prompt here, I'm throwing it a bit of a curveball. I've attached an image of myself in a place I took in a reflection. So all these AI models are going to be getting is a reflection of a public place. I'm going to ask both of them, where is the place based on this photo? Explain why you believe this is the place you've chosen. Essentially asking it in a more complex way, where is this? And so we're gonna go ahead and hit submit on both of these and just honestly see if it can figure it out based on the reflection. Okay, okay, very, very good. Oh, wow. Okay, very, very interesting. Both of these AI models were able to correctly identify where this place was. But only one of these AI models is sure of where this place was. If we look at the Copilot response, it says this place appears to be Granville Island in Vancouver, Canada. It says it, it says this is the place. Here are the reasons. It's got a Canada flag, it's got a marina with boats, there's an urban waterfront, and there's a reflection. Often seen in tourist photos taken at popular spots like Granville Island. It's a well-known spot, it's got links, and it's even got a map showing where exactly it is. Very interesting. Now, if we compare that to the ChatGPT response, we can see here that it's a little bit more unsure of where exactly this is. It says Vancouver, Canada, which is correct. And here's why Canada flag, waterfront, marina, city and architecture. But then 
it says that it's probably an area like Granville Island or Coal Harbor. It's it's kind of guessing. It doesn't know with 100% certainty. Whereas if we compare that to the co-pilot response, it tells us definitively this place is Granville Island, which is correct. Okay, so to finish off round four here, I have to give the win to Microsoft Copilot. Microsoft Copilot was able to correctly identify where the photo was taken with certainty. Whereas ChatGPT kind of gave a guess. The reasons why it thought it was kind of given a guess were good, but it was uncertain of where exactly it was. Whereas Copilot, on the other hand, gave some solid reasons as to why it thought it was this particular place and gave the definitive place it actually was, which is very interesting. So in either case, no matter the results here, the main thing that remains is where is this the most accessible for you? For many people, Copilot is much more accessible to them. For other people, ChatGPT is. It entirely depends on what your specific needs are. So with that being said, did you agree with my thoughts? Disagree? Let me know down in the comments below. I would love to elevate the conversation and figure out what your favorite chatbots are. So as always, my name is Josh Mountain and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.